All right, guys, so the Moto G, I've been using it now for about two days, and it's a great device. It feels good in the hand. Everything about it, I think, is really nice, um, for with the exception of a couple of things. So uh, the first thing that I, I've gotten a lot of questions on this, so and I was going to post an initial video, but um, I just decided to go ahead and answer any of these questions in this video. So the battery, <clears throat> excuse me, guys, the battery on this is 2070, just like the old one. Uh, the last year's generation, first generation, and it is, uh, it, it it comes across as average at best now, because they've upgraded the they've upgraded some features on the phone, but they left all the processing power the same. So they gave it a new cam new cameras, new speakers, new screen, all these things, and the battery, even even network settings, is now HSPA plus instead of three G. So I think all these things are playing a part in how this phone is for performing now on battery. Uh, battery life, uh, I, I can't get, the, the, uh, in my first uh, impressions with the, the original Moto G, it was 3G, so I went days with one charge. This one, actually, I've only made it about 13 hours, uh, and I only got about three and a half hours of screen on time. So uh, I think with the upgrades that they've given you, now remember, I'm a heavy user. I mean, I, I use, it, use phones a lot during the day. Um, so... I think with the upgrades they gave us uh, on this generation, the second generation, probably should have bumped the battery about 500 milliamps. That would have been that probably would have helped out with some of the processing power issues. But other than that, I mean, um, the battery can last the average user, like a, a person who doesn't use it. Let's just say maybe, uh, maybe an hour of web surfing, maybe well not web surfing, maybe 30 minutes of web surfing, 30 minutes of emails per day. Um, not just not a lot of usage in the day can make it through a full day without a charge and also you could probably make it into two days so the battery life eh, it's average at best for a heavy user uh it's, it's not the best compared to uh some of the other devices that i have um with the, about the same or less battery because remember it's all about optimization too so the next question that i've been getting from people is about the speakers well, this may have dual front firing speakers, and they do sound better than the one that was on the back of the original Moto G, but they're no boom sound. It's not like that. These are considered to be stereo speakers, and you know they could be considered to be stereo speakers, but a very low stereo speaker setting, uh, because this these these speakers, if you're using it for music, you won't be able to crank it up very high because it immediately gets a little crackly and, and muffled, and then if you're using it for uh, speakerphone calls, you definitely would not enjoy that because no matter what setting I put it at, it still just came across as a little muffled. It just didn't sound right. And so I had to take it off a of speakerphone. And then when you're using it for just regular phone calls with no speakerphone, it sounds, it just doesn't sound like the average phone call. It, it just, it sounds weird. Uh, like, um, I'll give you an example. This little phone right here, this is a, a the the new Samsung um, T9, T199 or something like that. The speaker phone, here's a speaker. And then um, <clears throat> you, here's the front for the talking on calls. This phone, it's not a put down or anything, but I have to compare it to something. You know, this has a better speaker quality than this phone. Uh, it's loud. Um, and when you're on a speaker phone, it actually sounds really good. It's not muffled anything like that. And this, this cost me $19. So to put into perspective, all the questions that I've gotten about, uh, how's the speaker, the speaker on this is well below average. If you ask me, it may have front firing speakers, but you can't crank them up to enjoy them without the crackling and the, the, the noise distortion. And the same thing goes for your phone calls. I had to keep the volume pretty low in order to get it a clear, uh, sound from, from the other people. Uh, it just doesn't, the speakers, um, and this is the, first iteration of this dual front fire speakers for the Moto G. So I don't know how they could fix this, but it's just well below average in my opinion. And and that's about the two things that I've had an issue with. Oh, and one more thing I had an issue with was the network. Now I've dropped calls on this and lost service more than any other phone I have. It's pretty amazing uh, that um, it just loses service. And, and before some of you say, well, you just got a bad phone. Well, I, I don't think so because it, it keeps service a lot. But when I'm traveling, it, it definitely drops off in places because I have more than one phone. So other phones still have service. Uh, just an example, my, my MediaPad X1, it's not even a, a, a T-Mobile phone, but it keeps service 
and it keeps at least uh, HSPA plus or 3G, 4G the entire trip. This one is, loses service completely. It just says no service. So, and, you know, I, I don't know. I don't know if they can fix that in a software update, whatever, give some kind of update. It could be just, it's running 4.4.4. .4. I don't know. But this is my experience with this. And this isn't to deter anyone from buying it because there are tons of things that I actually like about this phone. And let's move on to that. The upgraded camera has proven to be very nice. I think that if you are looking for a low price device um, with a good camera, this is the one. It has an eight megapixel camera and it shoots great pictures. Even the front-facing camera, I did a video uh, with the front-facing camera for my nephews or something like that. It really, really, really did well. Um, software on here is, I found that compared to the other Moto G, uh, and there's no bloatware on here really, just this alert and this assist, and I think that's pretty much it, uh, and this migrate, but that's not really bloatware to me because it's not tons of it and it doesn't really affect the performance too much. But this processor probably needed to be updated a little bit because they left the same internals from the other Moto G. And I don't think this package that's put together like this can handle it. I've noticed it's um, a little sluggish at times. If I have tons of things open, it'll it'll definitely, uh, like when I'm going from home screen to uh, in-apps or anything like that, it just, it's a little sluggish, about a second delay sometimes. So, um, these are just some things to keep in mind, but overall the device performs, um, it performs well. So I don't, I wouldn't tell people not to buy it. I would say, yeah, if you're looking for it, definitely if you're on a budget and you wanted an Android phone, uh, definitely purchase the Moto G, the second generation, or you could even get the first generation with the LTE model if that's important to you. But, uh, 179 for this device, I think is killer. So um, that's just a quick update. Uh, I will post a full review soon. That probably sounded like a full review, but it's not. Um, I will post an, an updated full review soon, probably in the next week or so. I also try to get some comparisons up between this and some other devices if I have time to do it. But uh, the Moto G second generation, definitely still a, a good purchase. Um, but these are just my experiences with it. If you do have it, sound off and let me know if you're having some of the same issues or, or uh, what you think about the phone so far. I will see you guys in the next one. Take care.